Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, Wise Models Forum, BX257, here to bring you another 1980s and 90s G.I. Joe tour review. And today for my second Navy theme month, I will start off with the G.I. Joe's Shoreline Defender, the 1990 Rampart. Rampart makes his first comic book appearance in the old mobile comic run of G.I. Joe, issue number 115, and makes his first cartoon appearance in the Deke animated cartoon episode titled United We Stand. Well, Rampart is kind of a funny name for this guy. Actually, it does make sense because a rampart is a uh, defending wall on a fortification. So he really takes his job seriously. He's kind of named himself after the type of work that he does. First, let's take a look at Rampart's accessories. We'll take a look at what's called on the contents list of the card, a missile launcher. That's a nice strap here, which you might think is something that is easily broken, and maybe it is. But one nice thing about it is that it was actually a separate piece. So that if it is broken, you might be able to find the separate strap just by itself and reattach it to the main uh, tube. You also notice that uh, Rampart has one of the missile on his, uh, on his leg there, and it is just pegged in by a very tiny universal dumbbell peg and hole system. He actually comes with two of these. You'll also notice that it has that little stick pointing out, just like the missiles from the 1991 Crimson Guard Immortal figure. And that is, of course, because these are flick missiles. And that's why there's a hole in the back of the uh, missile launcher. So you just put the whole thing in there. The stock pops out and you can just flick it out. It actually works very well with this because there isn't a handle blocking the way like the Crimson Guard Immortals launchers were. Oddly enough, nowhere on the card does it say that these are flick missiles. There aren't even any instructions. So you're just kind of left to doing that by yourself if you discover it or not. And a second accessory is what the contents list on the card calls a cannon. I know it looks a bit like a machine gun, but it isn't. It's very highly detailed. And it comes with a two-piece stand here. I just pop this off. And one of the reasons you might want to take the stand off is because as I had it, it was just in an emplacement form where you can just lie the uh, figure behind it to simulate shooting. But it also has this little hook here, which goes onto the side of his hip. So now he can actually hold it. And here's one of the very odd things about this uh, gun setup. Uh, I'm not really sure if this is based on a real world cannon or anti-tank rifle or anything like that. But this is a very detailed, very grip-like um, protrusion here. And yet this part is not very detailed at all. But when it's on his side here, it's very hard for the figure to actually hold this portion, but it's fairly easy for him to hold onto this. Now, I just assume that this was some type of a sight, but to be honest, it is rather big. So I'm just going to assume that it's a secondary grip or, I don't know, maybe it's a, some type of um, caulking handle or something, but I'm just going to use it as a secondary grip because it just fits onto the hand really well. Far better than the portion that looks actually like a grip.
At least I don't have to complain that this thing doesn't come with an ammo belt or ammo box. Like I do with a lot of machine guns which don't have that extra detail. And you kind of wonder where the ammunition actually comes from. But as what I'm assuming is an anti-tank rifle, it might actually be a single round per shot weapon. I mean, he has the thing attached to his hip, so I'm assuming that it doesn't have a large uh, rate of fire. Also, just to be clear, you don't have to remove the stand when it's in its hip-mounted mode. I suppose you could just leave it on there just for storage. And speaking of storage, it just occurred to me that firing from the hip might not be the original idea behind why this thing pegs, pegs onto his hip. This might just be a storage mode in itself or how he carries this thing into battle before laying it down on the ground to fire it like a normal cannon or machine gun. The card art, of course, depicts him firing it from the hip, but really, that's just an option out of many options you have for how to display this figure. When you think of a Navy shoreline defender, you might be thinking that the G.I. Joes would take the approach of a guy lounging on the beach just waiting for action to happen. But Rampart is totally not dressed for that. He's really dressed for what I can only call very rough weather with his very long coat. Um, one thing I do have to complain about, it's not really a complaint as I'm sure Hasbro really didn't, couldn't really do this very well. But this portion right in the middle is supposed to be a belt bisecting the rest of his coat. But in hand, um, just because of the way the articulation cut is, it kind of looks like his shirt is just kind of spilling out to the middle of his coat. But again, uh, Hasbro couldn't really do that to um, do the idea of a long coat on the figure very well, just because of how, um, how the body meets the hip portion. And the hips have these rather large cutouts for the legs on top of that. But the, the very, very heavy, very long coat really doesn't depict a, a very nice environment, to be honest. And then he has this wrapping that goes all the way around his hat. I, I'm guessing it's connected to the hat, but it forms a type of a hoodie around it. And he has his goggles over that, and he has gaiters over his boots. I mean, this guy is really ready for some rough weather. So by shoreline, I'm kind of thinking that this guy um, defends like cliff faces and just sort of rocky outcroppings that might be inhospitable, but still connected to the shoreline. He also has one nice little addition here is a little microphone on his face there, something that a lot of figures from 1990 and upward started to get. They started to get that sort of uh, micro tech look. But despite Rampart's rather realistic looks and very practical wear, he doesn't look like he's in the Navy. You have to understand that G.I. Joe is a stylized look at the armed forces. So you have guys like Topside, who is a sailor, he has Navy scrawled across his chest. And you have guys like Deep Six, a diver, who is in a very obvious and very uh, stereotypical diving suit. You can clearly say that, that, yeah, those two guys are in the Navy. This guy, however, doesn't look like he's in any type of waterborne operations. But that, of course, is the thing. The Navy isn't just about waterborne operations. But you also have to remember that this thing is sort of aimed at little kids who really just do need those cues sometimes. What would have made Rampart better, perhaps, is maybe a navy blue coat and maybe some maybe grayish uh, color scheme behind that rather than the um, sort of a sandy beige here. But despite that he still looks rather impressive just on his own. Sure you can use him as an army guy, marines, maybe even coast guard, but would that be so bad? Honestly, he's a, just a very serious looking dude. As far as a rivalry on the Cobra side, I'm not sure if there is an opposite number to Rampart. He is an air defense artillery man, and as such, he would be fighting against vehicles rather than individual Cobra troopers. So he would be shooting at, let's say, 1989 Cobra Condors, or 
maybe 1990 Piranha Boats, that sort of thing. Rampart is a fairly easy figure to find on the aftermarket. There's not a lot of paint that you have to worry about rubbing off, so he's fairly easy to find in very complete and mint condition. About the only things you really have to worry about is whether the strap is not broken or not, whether or not he has both of his rockets. Um, sometimes a figure will only come with one. He only really needs one, to be honest. One just fits on his uh, leg there, and the other you just have to sort of put it into his rocket launcher just to store it there. And, of course, you also have the um, rather robust little stands here on his cannon. But all of these things are still rather easy to find, and you shouldn't really be paying a lot for this figure on the aftermarket, to be honest. Forum BX57 here for another. Also, just to be clear, you don't have to remove the stand from the cannon when it's in its hip mode mounted mode. And here's Rampart with all of his Navy buddies, and he still looks like the odd man out. I think the only Navy character that I'm missing here is Tracer. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.